Good afternoon. Well, it's early evening to be uh, to be fair, and we're back. Uh, I don't know if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we put a video out to say, "What do you want to see?" I had some watches. I asked you what you wanted, and I think someone replied they wanted to see the Smith Sempire, and we had another request for the Smith's Empire so let me just straighten this camera up a bit oh lord there we go hang on there we go that's better they wanted the Smith's Empire so that's what we got well uh Smith's Empire watches what can I tell you about them I'll pop the back off of this one because it was a a bit of a nightmare to get off so there you go uh made in the uk it's uh fully wound the crystal's missing the minute hands bent uh and there you have it so smith's watches what's unique about smith's watches i hear you say and why would anyone want to look at them well smith's watches they ran from about 1946, just after the Second World War, maybe even earlier, up to 1980. They was made in a, a little uh, town in England called Cheltenham. Uh, what else can you say about them? They, uh, they joined with another company, Ingersoll. I don't know whether they aligned and they was two companies together. I, I don't know. But Ingersoll and Smiths had some sort of connection. Um... They went off and made the uh, made watches uh, called the Anglo Celtic Watch Co. out in uh, in Wales, um, and that's all I can really tell you about the actual watch itself or the watch companies. When you think that maybe back in the nineteen seventies, your average workman's wage was forty eight quid a week. If he was a, you know, he had a really sort of a reasonable job, a bus driver working in the docks or on the trains or a lorry driver, something along those lines. Uh, I think a loaf of bread was 9p for a loaf of bread. So it shows you that these watches, although some people now consider them to be cheap and cheerful and not worth having, not worth restoring, uh, back in the day, yeah, they, they were still worth a few quid. So, without further ado, let's have a look at it. So, it's fully wound. The hairspray, the, the balance wheel is moving a little bit. So, we we'll just have a quick look inside. Sorry about that. I don't know if you can see how much movement there is there. But I think that the uh, I think the balance wheel might be shot. I can get hold of it and get a better look at it. Come back, come back! I hear you say. There it is. Hey. There it is. I see if I'm getting back. It, it looks to me seriously as though the balance is uh, okay from there. If you can see how much movement there is and shake on that. So there we go. Well, some of the early Smiths and Ingersoll watches, they were considered to be so cheap and cheerful that no one would ever want to repair them. So what the company did, <clears throat> let's have a look. they riveted the top and bottom cases together. Um, so really there was no point in taking them apart. Why would you bother to drill it, tap it, put screws in when no one was ever going to take it apart? It was a cheap watch. Broke, you threw it away. But at some stage in their <coughs> development, 
they decided to change this out for screw fixes so they could be taken apart now <clears throat> I don't know if you can see just in there but I've got a feeling that that because I've had a look around the sides of this while we've been chatting and I can't see anywhere other than that little part there where you could put something in it to push the click back so that we can take the power out of the watch because I'm sure if we try and this you see how it's moving there I'm sure if we try and take this apart without letting off the power we're going to end up with a broken watch so what we want <clears throat> back to the old uh, cheap and nasty screwdrivers let's see oh wow it's, uh, it's a bit on the big side oh I don't like to do this I really don't know what I'm going to do with this because as I've said on all of the uh, videos don't try this at home because I don't know what I'm doing I'm just an amateur so let me see if I can get this There we go. Can you see how that's held it? That's it. So you put the screwdriver in there and then you can carefully, don't let it slip. If it slips, it goes boing. And then you probably break it forever. Oh, it slipped a bit then, didn't it? You hear it go So we're just gently letting it slip through the fingers. That's it. I don't think that earlier big bang had any uh, effect on it because it's still got some power in it. There you go. So that's it. That's how you release <coughs> the power from the mainspring on a Smith's pocket watch. You have to excuse me. I'm drinking me tea. <clears throat> so where are we going to start right this is just going to be a, <clears throat> a disassembly video so that we can <clears throat> excuse me find out what's wrong what's missing and see if it's going to be possible or worthwhile to try and re to repair it so without further ado let's get off the uh the barrel bridge you would call it I'll take off the barrel bridge uh, what do I want what do I want a little pot for parts <clears throat> let's pop that up there out of the way so we'll take out the screws drink drink Is that another one there? Yeah. That little one tried to fool us, didn't it? And when you see how, <clears throat> I mean, Smith's made really, really good pocket watches at one stage. You know, they made um, gold pocket watches with loads of jewels. They made some expensive... They made some expensive watches in their time. This falling apart on me. Yeah, it's come apart a bit. I don't know if you can see that. Excuse fingers. I don't want to pull it apart at the moment. Ah, right, it snapped back together. And that's exactly how I'm going to leave that because I don't want to get too involved in it. So I'm just going to have a quick look now to see how I think this is held in. I wasn't sure if these screws here were case screws or not. <clears throat> but looking at them, I don't think they are. Um, so we've got to determine really which way this comes out of the case. So let's pop off this front bezel. Alright, that may 
makes a bit more sense now. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so now we've got a, a, a poor old hand. Look. Boing. So what we do now, we'll, we'll pop off the hands. Because that's got to be a place to go, isn't it? I think, I think we're going to do a full strip. So yeah, I think hands off is going to be the place to go. I've not taken much care of the minute hand there. Normally I would be a bit more protective of it. Sorry, the second hand. But you saw, you know, you saw the state of it. Ah, I nearly went rushing in then, didn't I? I nearly went rushing in. I nearly rushed in without a plastic bag to stop the hands from going flying. The trouble with this is when you're trying to do this with underneath a plastic bag, you can't very well see what you're doing. Uh, See how we get on. See how we get on. Pop! And there they are. So they came off quite well. Let's get rid of the plastic bag. Let's get the two hands. Oh. oh. So, went under there well. There you go. Let me get that out of the way. I'm just going to gently see what that is there. Looks like a bit of a mark on the case, on the uh, on the dial. <clears throat> but again, if he's been knocking around in somebody's drawer without a crystal in. It's no surprise. There you go. I don't know if you can see that. Made in Great Britain. And now what I'm going to try and do is ease this off. Without doing any damage. And we didn't do any damage, but it decided it wanted to try and escape. It tried to escape. So we'll keep that. See if we can maybe straighten that hand up. So. And what we're going to find now, screwdriver, that's what we want. Let's see if we can get some of these screws out. Because like I say, oh, uh, I don't know. Hello. Hello, what was that? Oh yeah, see, can you see how that's all wobbling about? So that's the way to go if you're doing one of these. It's the front four screws. Huh. Voila. It lifts off. <coughs> so now we're down to the nitty gritty. How's this held on? Oh, I see. Okay. Can you see just there? Uh, oh yeah. Let's get. Let's come in something a bit more robust. Robust. It's a good word. Isn't it? If you want a robust pair of pliers or a robust pair of tweezers robust tweezers so now what we're going to do is we're going to grab that and just open it back a little bit you see we've got another one there to what we could use yeah we can use these so we've got another one there 
swing that open another one just there you got to be still a little bit careful with these because you know they're bent over once they don't like to be unbent and we've got to bend them back again <clears throat> so we have to be a little bit careful with them again even though this isn't <clears throat> the most expensive watch in the world let's give it some love and use the plastic tweezers to lift off the dial so we don't scratch it let's pop that down there let's lift off the washer I guess that's the hour wheel Is this on camera? No, I don't know if you can see, but that kind of looks riveted down in there. Do we need to get off the... Again, I reckon that's proper, properly well pressed on there. <coughs> but now we're down to the bones of it. We can have a look and see how much movement we got on that. think that's too much and if you look at it from this side let's get that light out of the way a bit um, turn it around now now why don't I turn this light on as well see if that helps the situation a little bit it's not done great but I don't know if you can see there this part of the regulator is riveted and here, I wonder if that's come loose. That's an unusual thing, isn't it? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So this is a kind of a in adjustable. It looks like ah, that's tight. I was wondering, this must screw down onto the uh, balance star. And I wondered if it had come loose, and that's why we had this much movement. It's hard to see from where, where you're looking at it. Let me see if I can show you here. It's, it's wobbling about. All right, I just need to have a look. All right. Okay, so the hairspring. I can get this to focus kindly. The hairspring goes through there. Usually there's a hairspring stud where the hairspring fits into the balance cock. But on this, the actual balance cock is the bottom pivot. Let me see if I can get this into focus a bit. There, you should just you should just about be able to see that that there that pin goes through and the hairspring is running through that part of the bottom uh, bottom plate. So it's all interesting, isn't it? So I'm going to have to get quite a robust. There he is again with his robust because I would imagine that this um, this pin going in is going to be pretty tight. Let's see if we can get it so you can see it. Ah, there's a good picture of it. So, yeah, so that pin running that way that's actually holding the hairspray. I don't know if you can see the gap that's in them pliers. Look, you, you could park a lorry through there. How am I going to go on to that? No, more chance of uh, doing it for something else. So let's see if we can get them with these. Uh, they're too wide to go in the hole. Oh, lordy lord. 
Lordy, lordy, lord. Okay, let's see if we can get on with these. Let me see if I can get you a good shot on it. There it is. See, the trouble is, I've got to turn it so I can see it. Okay, so it doesn't want to pull out. So what we're going to do, we're going to get our screwdriver. This is where this could all go horribly wrong. That, that little pin that I'm holding will come shooting out. So you have to excuse me because I'm going to have to try and do this without losing it. You might not see it. You might not see it because I can hardly see it. Ah, oh, did you hear that click? Well, luckily, yeah, it's not really good, is it? It's so hard to see in there. It's my cheap camera. It's even worse, isn't it? So there it is. So that tiny pin that we don't want to lose actually holds the hairspring. Can you see where it goes through that hole? So if we start backing this off, see it's popped out? I don't know if you can see it. So now if we keep backing it off. That's okay. I can live with that being off there like that. Yeah, okay. So, so, so. Right, let's take the part, plates apart. Do, 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 do. do, do, do. Been a beautiful day here in London, United Kingdom. It's been sunny, been beautiful. There you go. Right then, that's all the screws released. So, now we need to be a bit careful getting the two plates separated. Because again, I'm not sure, I'm not too worried about the train wheels. Because they're going to go where they go. But I'm worrying how this is going to, see how it's shimmering? Let's have a, oh, there we go. are falling out so there's a part of the uh, winding mechanism that fell out that'll be interesting to get back together I'm sure now I don't know if you can see but the hairspring is still attached through the regulator so you have to try and Pull that out. Am I going the right way? No, probably not. That's it. So, there you go. If I do it from this side, you might see. There you go. So, that's it. We've detached the top plate from the bottom plate, and now we can have a look at the uh, balance wheel so we move that out of the way get a good grip on it and let's have a look let's turn that around a bit more right. 
I don't know how I'm going to do this. Hang on, what can I do? How can I do it? Oh, Lord. I'll tell you what I can use. I can use the monster ones, because these clamp up. So, yeah, that's better. So, if I move this spring round a bit, so it's actually out of your view, the end of it. Yeah, there you go. Can you see we got no we got no uh, pivots on it? There's nothing on that one. Let me just have a quick look. Yeah, both the pivots. One there and one there. They have snapped off of the balance wheel. So, we've come as far as we can come. Bring that back in the focus. Remember I've talked to you about the um, pallet fork. You can see on here, this is quite a good one. Because it's quite big. Yeah, so you, you'll get an idea now looking at the parts. So, first, second and third wheel, our wheel, this wheel here is your escape wheel, those wheels, those little uh, parts of the cog, bang on to those as it's going backwards and forwards, and the actual roller jaw fits in there, and knocks it backwards and forwards to get your tick tock, tick tock. And I don't know if you can see it again. I probably won't see it on that. I don't mind handling this now because it's uh, destroyed itself. Can you see? Can you see just in there? there's still pin not very clear camera's not great just there there you go you can see that still pin well that still pin fits into that gap in the pallet fork and that's what causes it to tick tock so now well what do we do you know we've seen what's wrong with it these watches were never expensive in the beginning. Uh, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll call this. Uh, we'll call this a day. I'll go off and search eBay, see if I can find a uh, a balance wheel complete, because I don't think you can really re re uh, restart it. Well, you could, but let's go and see if we can find a balance wheel complete and a crystal. They were about in plenty, so plenty full supply of these uh, watches. So that's what we'll do. So don't know where, don't know when, but I'm going to go and try and see if I can find the bits. Um, that's it for today.